All right, we're here with Ice Bonilla, who for many years starred on the soap opera Guiding Light, but is now making his way in Hollywood. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about what got you started in acting and talk about your current projects that you had just uh, recently completed? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> just talking about myself as well. Um, I started acting when I was like 16 years old. I, uh, my, I was in ninth grade, uh, which was like my junior high school senior year. Mm -hmm. And we had this dance performance of Grease, you know, like Danny Zuko. Yep. And uh, there weren't really rehearsals held. It was just like for the female dance team, but they thought it might be fun to actually have a guy play Danny. Um, and like just just for fun, I was like, I'll do that. Sure, why not? Um, and it was like a, this. Uh, it was a great show. It was you know the gym teacher was the one that directed it. It was funny. But uh, you know you get on stage and you fall in love. I mean that's where I first got like the taste of whatever acting is or whatever you know performing was. And uh, ever since then it's just been sort of what my focus has been. And you, um, what were your first roles besides? Being Danny Zuko. Being Danny Greece. Zuko to a bunch of girls. Awesome. Audition, awesome. Yeah. I wore tight pants. I made a fool of myself. Um, the first things I ever did. Um, well, I got really lucky when I like right when I hit high school, like, like sophomore year, I went to like environmental studies in the city, and I googled like open casting calls for for management companies and agencies, and the company that I'm with. To this day, happened to have one. It was like a sign from God or something, because the casting call was on my birthday, mm -hmm. but it was already past September 8th. It was, um, and I, so I got a manager pretty early in the game. Uh, so the first like professional gig I got, I think, was like three lines on the Law and Order. SVU. You, I was like a cashier clerk. Okay. Or like a, a serial killer. I was like three ninety nine. He was like what? I was like maybe it's three hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> it was really good. And then he whipped out his knife and, and then off he killed you? me. No, I'm just kidding. No. He, he just left. He was like, oh, he has to be four dollars. And then you went on to star on Guiding Light for a number of years. So that was a, a good break for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I was acting for a little while. I, I been to the Sundance Labs, I'd had like a gig here or there, um, and I went to college and I wanted to go to, I wanted to audition for Tisch and go to a conservatory and mm -hmm. study my craft, and my manager said no, that it's better for you to stay in the game and still audition, because often when you go to conservatories, you're, they don't, they frown upon auditioning outside of your education. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she like recommended that I go to a regular school, get some real life experiences, and then like take classes on the side. And that's what I did. I went away to Bard, just like two hours upstate. Um, and it was my freshman year of college that I auditioned for Guiding Light. Um, and so I, I took a leave of absence from college then, and, and technically I'm a dropout, I guess. Because I've, I've been busy ever since. Yeah. It's fantastic. And you did Guiding Light for a number of years, and now. You know, talking about those real life experiences, I know we've talked previously. You just completed a movie where your character falls in love with uh, a girl who becomes paralyzed, and you draw on your real life experience for that. Was that that was the first time that your real life experience helped you for a role so deeply, right? I mean, to that extent, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, you're talking about musical chairs. Mm -hmm. Musical chairs. Uh, it's like it's this beautiful fairy tale of a story about this boy who falls in love with this girl who's a dancer um, but he doesn't really fall in love with her until he gets to know her and it's after this car accident that she goes through and it's not until she's in the hospital and, and can't walk that he really falls for her so that's that's a beautiful story um, the reason why it's so close to me it's uh, because my my uncle uh, was a paraplegic for 31 years of his life before he passed away um, and he Wow, he passed away like, I guess, two years ago, a year and a half ago. Um, literally while I was auditioning for musical chairs. 
and he was in a medically induced coma in a hospital in, in, the, in the Bronx. And I was talking to him like, Dio, Dio is uh, you know, Spanish for uncle. Um, I was just saying, Dio, you have to wake up, you have to see this film mm -hmm. I'm going to do. It's going to be amazing. Um, and it's about people in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. you know, it's rare. I, I just thought it, um, I don't know, serendipitous that uh, a film like that came along at that time of my life. You know, I loved my uncle. Um, and the parallel between my experience in the film is that my character in that film, his name is Armando, mm -hmm. and Armando sees the female lead, Leah, um, as nothing less. You know, he sees her as a beautiful woman. And that's it. And I saw my uncle as a strong man, and that's it. I never saw him as anything less, even though he saw himself as as half a man. Often, which is sad. And now, after that experience in that movie, you've also, you had another movie come out after that, correct? Yeah, uh, right after the Music of Chairs, uh, premiered in theaters, I had another film premiere uh, specifically on the, the West Coast called mm -hmm. Mamitas. Um, that film I, I, I love. It's a big part of my heart because of like the, the time I had on set and the, the fun that I had and the, how much I felt I, I grew as an actor. Mamitas is a, is a, a coming-of-age story of sorts about a boy from uh, like Echo Park, L.A. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, the the, uh, the story is about this kid and the women in his life. Uh, and it may seem at first that it's about like the girls he's trying to hit on and dating and like his peers in school. Um, but it also involves the friends that he makes, like the genuine friends, which is the female lead, um, his teachers and his mother. There's relationships mm -hmm. um, there that are that are interesting for him, and he grows throughout the story to realize that. He is not allowing himself to be himself, that he's putting on this mask of sorts to be cool or to be accepted. Um, and through this friendship that he develops with the, the female lead, uh, Veronica Diaz, who uh, plays the girl, he realizes that there's more for him out there. I mean, it's, it's a sort of basic coming of age story plot, but in my opinion, the way it was done was original and, and, and now what advice would you give to people who are just starting out in the industry now that you've had some success in the daytime area and film you're now sort of bi-coastal and you you know you've done projects on each uh, each coast what advice would you give to somebody just starting out in acting um I, I get I have like friends that ask me all the time, like, oh, I wish I could have done acting, and I wish I could have, you know, started acting, or I wish I could have been involved in, in the arts of some sort. And I feel like the best advice to anyone, like whatever age you are, whatever whatever it is you want to do, is to immerse yourself in that culture. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an actor, act. If you want to be, an, you know, an artist, draw. You have to do it. And I feel like once you start making the doing your focus, things start to fall into place for you, you know, uh, get into a good class, that's incredibly important. Of course, there's the basic things like getting headshots and, and being as professional as you can be, but more than anything, you, you have to do it. I mean, what the way I look at it is like this, if you are that good, they won't be able to say no. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my goal. I, there's nothing else I can I can do. I can't control how I look. I can't control how tall I am. I can't control certain things. I can't completely even avoid how people might take me or assume me to be. But I can work on my talent and my skill, and mm -hmm. I can and I can sharpen all of that. And for me, it's just uh, the idea of. How can I get better? What do I have to do to get better? And then do that. And hopefully, you know, someday there's a place where it's like, this part wasn't necessarily geared towards me, but I was that good that they could.
couldn't say no. You know? Thank you so much, EJ. Appreciate your time. It's awesome.